Hello everyone, welcome to this lovely, dis or this display of lovely uh, holdings of the Bodleian Collection. You may be asking yourself, Giovanna, member of Henrika Lehnemann's History of the Book Class, uh, <laughs> Printer's Apprentice, and reader for the MST in Yiddish Studies, what are these wonderful objects from the Bodleian Collection? Uh, and uh, I would tell you, well, I thought you'd never ask. Uh, they're, uh, they're Hagajot. Um, and you may be wondering, what is a Haggadah? And to that I would say, you know how to form plurals in Hebrew. Good job. Yeah. A Haggadah <laughs> uh, is like an instruction manual for my favorite holiday, Passover. And you might be thinking, what is Passover? <laughs> I live in a country that has a state religion. Um, sorry, I'm from America. <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, Passover is... Uh, it's a holiday, it's an eight-day festival holiday to celebrate the Israelites' uh, emergence from Egypt and their freedom from slavery in Egypt. So, uh, you might ask me, what do you do on Passover? And I would say, what is this, the four questions? <laughs> um, on Passover, you, you forswear your beautiful Gale's potato rosemary bread in favor of just eating really dry matzo crackers that make you feel like you've been wandering through the desert for 40 years. Um, you have a, a big communal celebration, uh, a, a meal. It's called a seder. Seder is Hebrew for uh, order. And you do things in a particular order. You say blessings, you drink four cups of wine, um, you stay up till 2 a.m. singing songs with your ex-boyfriend's family, uh, <laughs> even though you've only been dating for two months. and. Uh, <laughs> You um, have, have, have a lovely meal and say a lot of, of blessings. You ask a lot of questions. You talk about the tradition. Um, and um, in order to do all of that, it gets very complicated very fast. Uh, you have a book to kind of guide you along. You read through the book. You say the prayers in the book. And so these all are um, those books that tell you what to do on Passover, how to clean your house, how to burn all of the leavened bread in your house, how to make matzah, um, that those really dry crackers. Um, and excuse me if I'm, I'm saying things that you already know. I only learned all of this stuff within the past four years, um, and now I'm here doing an MSc in Yiddish studies. Um, so, um, right. So, what what did I want to focus on here? Um, so, you we have these these lovely books that are meant to be used, that are meant to be taken with you to the dinner table, uh, and you sit down and you are you know flipping through everybody at the table. Sometimes gets one and, and you read through. And so, so that's what these are for. Um, I'm doing my history of the book project on these two, um, which are um, uh, they're Haggadot printed in Venice, um, and they're very, very lovely and beautiful. I am digitizing this one and I'm comparing it to this one. Um, and there are a lot of things that I've that I've noticed uh, in the process of, of doing this. So um, one issue with with Haggadot and with, with prayers in general in Hebrew is that they're in Hebrew, and so um, which is for its to its credit the holy tongue. But not everybody understands that, and everybody needs to help prepare for Passover and to follow along during the seder. So uh, you'll be putting a lot of people will put then the um, Haggadot in the vernacular language, and for Ashkenazic Jews, the Eastern European Jews, that language was Yiddish, and so. Um, I am interested in the uh, relationship between Hebrew and Yiddish on the page um, and how Hebrew, I'll say Hebrew is privileged on the page because you know it's the holy tongue, it's the actual blessings, but then you have the translations that are on the sides. Uh, Yiddish also was considered to be a woman's language, that men were the enlightened intellectuals who read Hebrew and studied the Torah, and women, you know, Yiddish is called the mamaloshin, the mother's tongue, or the mother tongue. Uh, it, it's it's associated with women. A lot of books are actually inscribed, you know, by authors. They say to the women readers and uh, the illiterate men. You know. <laughs> illiterate because they're reading Yiddish. <laughs> anyway, so um, I'm interested in in that relationship. On the how did that play out on the page? And as a printer, one of the most interesting ways to me is that um, the letters in the the physical letter forms in Yiddish are in a different typeface than the letter forms in Hebrew. Uh, and this is called, uh, for Yiddish, this special typeface is called Weibotech. Any German speakers want to tell me what Weibotech might mean? 
Three minutes, okay. <laughs> it means women's German. So it's very, very deeply encoded in Yiddish that it's this um, women's language. So um, I brought out a bunch of Haggadot um, from the Oppenheim collection, though not all of them were directly given to Oppenheim. This one is in Hebrew. Um, so you can see something that's all in Hebrew with different typefaces. The commentaries will be in uh, a, a Hebrew script called Rashi script. Uh, then you'll have the um, Yiddish ones that have the very interesting architectural features. They have these columns, and in the columns, the translations are written in Yiddish, or also sometimes just completely random other things. So they'll have captions that are just in Yiddish instead of having uh, captions. They, they, it's not even a translation of any Hebrew. It's just like, this is just for vernacular users. Um, so these two are from Venice. Then we have one from Prague to compare. This one is interesting because it sometimes doesn't use Weibotaich for Yiddish. Um, so that's something to, to look out for. Um, and then these three are from Amsterdam, which uh, they're, and they're, they're kind of the, the lower quality everyday use ones. These are big, ostentatious, beautiful ones. And you'll notice that the one that I'm digitizing is actually printed uh, material. These are all printed, but it's printed on parchment which is something I had never seen before this. But you think, yes, you use this at a, at a communal meal, you're using it every year, you want it to last forever, you're turning the pages a lot, you're actually, you'll note, um, spilling wine on it, because uh, you're drinking <laughs> four cups of wine. Um, so it's very interesting to, to see just how these were used, and, and Yiddish says how they're used, and anyway. Okay, okay. <laughs> and then, so I have one in German, just to please, uh, Professor Lehneman, <laughs> so you can see how in modern times things are usually translated with the maybe English or German underneath uh, the Hebrew, and not in this beautiful architectural way. And then we have the Haggadah uh, supplement from my Yale Yiddish professor, Josh Price. Uh, this is a very modern, feel free to flip through uh, and look at the political statements that people have made as riffs on the different blessings. Um, so yeah, okay. 